Hey guys, thanks for dropping by my page again. This is Underground Footage, and I'm here to show you a little bit about how to set up your Microsoft Expression Encoder 4 screen capture program, and then how to utilize and decipher the files that have been created. Um, first thing you need to do is go to your Edit Options gear button right in the middle of your program, and it's going to put you into a window that gives you the ability to change your screen, camera, and audio capture uh, settings. Uh, for the screen, the screen is going to be uh, the main thing you need to worry about. Now, the screen capture, the reason why that is is because that's going to be the bulk of your of your data. So your frame rate needs to be over 10 frames a second for people uh, to be able to make out what you're doing if there's a lot of movement on the screen. Uh, even as low as 5 frames a second if it's, uh, or even lower than that if you have still photography cut on, like I have now. Uh, the bit rate, um, I know it says 5 uh, kilobytes a second. That's what you see in this picture here. These are actually snapshots I took earlier. That's actually 5,000 kilobytes a second. Um, and that's actually 5,000 uh, thousand kilobytes a second. So that's 5 megabytes a second. Um, the default is 30,000 kilobytes a second. Uh, but 2,000, uh, 2 megabytes a second is right about what a high quality DVD would run at. So uh, you don't need to go any higher than that. And the quality can always be at 100, no matter what your frame rate or bit rate is. And you can make adjustments to the upper two to uh, justify your quality. Um, let's see here. This is just showing that the kilobytes a second is actually in the thousands of kilobytes. So that's really megabytes. As they should just said 3 megabytes a second. That's dumb. But uh, 30 megabytes, I mean. So, but you, uh, I chose 2 megabytes a second at 30 frames a second. I did that because it let me have more frames a second at a lower bit rate, but my quality is still going to be able to go up to 100. So you'll see the video is going to turn out pretty good. This is what this is the settings I'm using right now, and I'm actually taking a video of a picture. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, do any camera you want to use, just select it, and then you can uh, select your bit rate here in uh, your capture settings. Uh, don't choose a bit rate too much higher than your camera's capability because you're just going to be wasting your, your processing power. Your frames a second are going to automatically be 15. Uh, if you're going to use this as a small overlay, go ahead and just have a small photo. Uh, but if you're going to make it uh, bigger, uh, you know, go ahead and use uh, use a, a bigger output size. But you can't go over 15 frames a second if you're in the 1280 by 1024. You have to go in a smaller output size if you're going to go over that many frames a second. Um, also, with your audio, you need uh, with your audio, you need to make sure that you uh, just go ahead and stick it into two channel somewhere and just leave it. Uh, the biggest deal is going to be choosing the right uh, the right source. What I do is I turn on all my mics and I thump them, and you see them uh, light up over here, green and yellow, and uh, all the way up to red. Um, on the very bottom, you want to see one that says speakers. Select that, it's basically going to capture anything you hear out of your speakers. Um, the one here on top, you see microphone, that's going to be my Sound Blaster microphone. But right below that, you see microphone USB audio device, that's actually a microphone built into my webcam. So you may have the same options as well. Uh, make sure though that you're not using uh, uh, more than one microphone for the same audio because you, you might have a little bit of distortion on there, a little uh, sync problem there. Um, now I said that we're going to talk a little bit about how to uh, manipulate the files and locate the files uh, that we, we create whenever we use these this capture program and the encoder program because it seems to have mystified some people. Uh, if you were to have installed your program into the default location, you automatically would have a folder in your My Documents section. I'm going to go to my My Documents library, and I have now an expression folder. And there's expression encoder. And look, we have the three main folders. These are the three main folders we're going to use throughout our journey with Microsoft Expression. We'll start with the screen capture output folder on the bottom. This is where all the screen captures actually go as we record them. And it's where the web uh, cam uh, files go. Uh, now notice that they're in two different formats. The webcam actually is produced in a WMV file, which is kind of what we want when we want to upload it to YouTube or whatnot. 
so it's kind of cool so if you want to just make a, a webcam video you can just uh, put your screen capture on really low uh, put your webcam on really high and then just take the webcam photo or video and and uh, upload that but uh, also the screen capture is going to have your audio in it so that's kind of a kind of a bummer on that one um, the output though the output is what is after you actually encode your file remember we said that here in the screen capture folder there's this dot x e s x now the jobs are going to be a similar format dot x e j now this is the job simply this is the uh, the information on your encoding uh, the different files used the length the clippings all these different things all the little settings are in this job encoder right here okay this job file now this job file is used to produce the output file now the output file has to use either compatible video or the dot x e s x now it could use these files, it's the only program that can really use them. So those who said that you're, you're losing your files, it doesn't go in the jobs. Nothing goes in the jobs. If something's in jobs and something's wrong, it needs to be in the output. And this is where your encoder comes from. Your encoder puts the files. And it's all by date. So if you don't know what today's date is, I suggest you look down on the bottom right hand side of your computer and check it. Go back to grade school. So that's it, you know, that's your encoders demystified.